Minister Uguro, uh, National Minister for Education, Secretary Dr. Oke Kombra, all our distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen to the media, but most importantly to our children who will be leaving our shores very, very soon for their study in the United States of America. Let me uh, comment each and every one of you for holding up today. Uh, in fact, I did apologize. We had Parliament early on in the morning and went on right through 2 o'clock, so I did apologize that we uh, was not coming in in the earlier scheduled uh, meeting time, but I want to say thank you for your patience and for you to bear with us. And We are here today to mark this important moment, uh, not just for our students, but more importantly for our country as we make this uh, journey to start to sponsor our children to go and study in specialist areas we feel our country must produce in as far as our human capital is concerned. And so I want to, from the outset, comment Minister Oguro uh, and the team of the Education Department, Secretary Combra and every one of you for sticking to the focus. And in, in, uh, in your work, you pick on the directions that we, sh we directed from up front and you went on doing what you should do uh, without second thought. And uh, today's milestone and historic and good moment will not be possible without the leadership of uh, education department. And I just want to say thank you very much for this. <laughs> vision is one thing, and advocating a vision is one thing, but actually those of you who are on the ground to translate it, to make it happen, uh, when you translate it, it does happen. And many times we think that uh, leaders will come around and do a second round of instruction, or a new instruction. But whatever has already been said is instruction enough. And today the Education Department is reflecting on taking cue and getting to work. And I want to also thank, uh, for instance, Dr. Clement Weiner and others uh, who... Uh, Jason, thank you Jason for also uh, contributing and others who came back together <laughs> to realize that we need to get this uh, small but important big step. Uh, this may be a small moment, but it is a big step in the right direction for our country going forward. And I just want to say thank you. The fact that I am here gives uh, commendation at the highest and should signal to all of you that you are doing writing. And I want to come and give my fullest support and I, at the same time, thank those of you who are practitioners out there, to all the many teachers. I just want to uh, say thank you to you, but more importantly, I want to step back and say thank you to all the implementers out there, who, especially our teachers. And Samson Pitiki, principal of uh, the Passam National High School or School of Excellence, representing all the principals, you did step out and said a good prayer. I want to say thank you to all the teachers nationwide. Thank you, thank you very much. I don't know whether Joyce Tepu is here, but uh, she was. Yeah, yeah. She's here? Okay, she's. Thank you, Joyce. You haven't changed. You look, still look the same. Yeah. And, and all of you, anyway, all of you. Uh, but in 2008 and 2009, thereabouts, we had a special focus on our national high schools uh, because we knew that uh, was the embrace for all all of our children coming to our school system uh, was intended upon, but we also acknowledge there's a need to pick those who uh, come out of our grading system in grade 10, those who emerge as top, especially in the area of maths and science. And we need to pick them up, prepare them, so that we go into specialist training based on the need of our country going forward. So those were the instructions and, uh, and the vision we had back in 2008 and 9. Uh, well, uh, you know, the plan of God had it that I'll be Prime Minister this time around. Never knew that I'll be Prime Minister. was just working as any minister would. Uh, but now that I am Prime Minister, there is no more excuse. There is no one else uh, above me except the man upstairs, the God upstairs. And uh, I think this mission is in the right, right direction. 
Since 2008, 9, 10, there was a school of excellence at a start, stop, start, stop focus. I want to give commitment to all our national high school principals next year, going forward for the next nine years, until 2030 or 31 this time around, we want to really re revamp the, the school of excellence so that you can have the enabling facilities to bring in the best of grade 10. The best of grade 10 into the race of these uh, schools so that we prepare them so that the best of grade 12 are then picked for these specialist programs and study within as well as outside. And I took with special interest the students who are going out the respective, uh, uh, respective uh, programs, uh, faculties they'll be entering or courses they'll be doing. And I, I realized that there was no mention on medical, uh, medical uh, for doctors, doctor training. Uh, one of the reasons why we started this program back then, of course, the other areas uh, we want to also engage upon, but a big need facing us right now is the doctor to patient ratio in our country. And uh, we are stepping up to ensure our School of Medicine is expanded, but uh, whilst that is being worked upon, the universities are abroad offering good educational opportunity for students and government is willing to sponsor students to go and study medicines and come back and work in our country. And so I want us to look into this space. Uh, once our children get out there for the other studies, I want to especially make mention on the need to send students for a doctor and, and medical studies. There's a big need in our country. We want to send students right away. We have no time to waste. The first time I made uh, this reason known in 2008 or 9, in fact, it was I unbundled this reason in 2009 conference at the University of Boroka. Uh, 2009 up till today, how many years has gone past? Well, if you're weak, how many years? <laughs> I hear you are a good math teacher before, so maybe I understand. So 2009 to 2000, now 2022 or 23, that's about 14 years. A child who left grade 12 in 2009 as an 18-year-old child is today living in our society as a 32-year, 33-year-old man. Is he or she engaged? Is he or she doing something productive? Uh, that is the restlessness we have in our midst. Under the 1995 or whenever it was the reform that came in, we produced more grade 8 dropouts, more grade 10 dropouts, more grade 12 dropouts, with no continued education focus for them. They were thrown into society with no skills, let alone no continued hope in life. And this is the body of Papua New Guineans who are out there, and they are restless. And we cannot afford to have their children too becoming restless. It is their country as much as it is the country of those of us who are wearing white collar uh, uniforms into work every time. And I want to appreciate Education Department sensitivity. And I want to thank you all for bringing back 80,000 children into second chance learning last year, year before when we came back into government. Or when we came into government, we asked you to bring something that I spoke about in 2009 that opened the alternate pathway for the kids who leave grade 8 with no space in grade 9 or leave grade 10 with no space in grade 11 or those who have even left grade 12 because they have not scored the enough marks to meet the GPA requirements of colleges and universities in country. Let's open up so that we could embrace them. And for those who are born with the acumen to be physicists, chemists, or medical doctors, or in the specialist areas, we identify and we funnel them on. For those who are gifted elsewhere, we can put them back into society with the gift of business study, with the gift of practical skills in the Tibet sector, so that they could be men and women productive in their own country instead of producing people with no skill to our school system. That's what we really have been doing in the last 30 years. We've been producing, uh, we've been teaching them basic, basic math, science, English, social science that is not worth to carry on with life skills. And as they leave various uh, levels of going out of school, that remain in our society doing nothing. Today I want to announce that this sponsorship program will go bigger as we step forward into next year. 
and not just for specialist, uh, specialist programs that we identify, uh, the National Department of Labor has been tasked with the higher education to do manpower skills analysis in our country and to point to us as we grow the economy where our strategic needs of our country in as far as labor needs are concerned. Today I'll give you another, another part of the economy that will suffer if we don't train pilots. Pilots in our country is a rare human species these days. There's no more pilots, we haven't trained pilots. Today you go, if I have a fr few friends who fly me in helicopters and I, I enjoy them being flown around by nationals. Uh, they, there's only six or seven chopper pilots we have left in the country. And so these are some things that we must pick up quickly. And so it's up to us in the lower education, higher education to work to identify our children. They come unpolluted, uncontaminated, uncorrupted. And as they come into our school embrace, our school system must identify them very early on. What is the acumen and what is the propensity in that child? If it's a math child and science child, you promote him in that space. If he or she is a social science student, student promote him in that space. If he or she is uh, gifted in arts, music, sports, promote them in that space with all the bridging, bridging uh, at different levels that must be open for students who want to go back into another space as they come up in the 18 or in the 13 or 12 years they're in contact with us in the education system. So those are some of the conversations we had in 2008 and 9 when I first became education minister. Well, I'm here as Prime Minister now and there is no more excuse. We will support education in a big way and we will support this specific sort of focus areas too in a big way going forward. So I want to commend you all and you all have my full support. I want a paper to come to cabinet in this focus area so that as they go we will sustain them and we will look at working with some of our state-owned enterprises to ensure that there's a sustainability to this so that the scholarship program is run and sustained and we produce results for Papua New Guinea, uh, you know, uh, skill and upskilling and labor building going forward into the future. I want to uh, give you a commitment. This program will be sustained. And Minister for Education, I'm waiting on a paper for you into cabinet so that we can sustain this program. And it must not be a one-off program. It must be part of the educational department and higher education department focus areas, the best kids coming out of our school system picked to give them all spaces in life. No one must be left behind. No one must be doing nothing after grade 12. So long as the child is willing and able, pick him up to be given a skill or a, or a degree or a certificate in life where they could then come back and contribute to us, or not just come back, work externally. Uh, there's a glo the globe is becoming a village, it's a becoming a small place, you could work outside, you could come back here and work, does not matter, so long as we, we can turn you into being a productive Papua New Guinean, we are happy with that, so I just want to say to all the kids who will be in this program going forward. So well done everyone, this program will not be stopped, we want to support it in a big way going forward. Today at this time I want to announce that the School, School of Excellence We'll put on a PIP allocation program for School of Excellence again next year going forward. I want to also announce that the, this program must carry on and I want to put at the earliest, please, find me some students for the medical sector uh, and some for pilots. Our economy needs this right now. Uh, we need more doctors, more nurses. Of course, we have school in our country, but we still need more of them. It doesn't hurt for us to send them outside and to go and study. I want to also indicate, based on our increased uh, deliberate work of partnership with the United States of America, they're looking at visa, uh, fine-tuning visa arrangements with not just uh, Pacific, but more importantly with Papua New Guinea. So there'll be specific visa pathways open for PNG students and also for Papua New Guineans to find employment in the U.S. going forward. This is important. <laughs> the opportunity for U.S. to be linked into sponsor, uh, picking up this program to sponsor. Uh, this sponsorship program we're doing will not only be with U.S., I want to encourage 
higher education to partner education to look into sponsoring children to Australia, to Japan, to China, to the world out there with a specific focus on getting our children, go and study, you work there, you come back, that's not matter. Just send our kids out to school externally. That's something we're looking for. <laughs> Lastly but not the least, I want to say uh, to speak to my children. Uh, all of you are very important. And um, amongst many, you will pick. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you, to my daughters and to my son. Uh, time does fly. Don't squander these opportunities. I want you to pick the experience of Daniel in Daniel chapter 1, verses 8. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Daniel had every reason to be angry with God when he was taken captive into a foreign land. Yet Daniel remained true to his God. To my children as you leave your country, there will be moments of homesick. There will be moments of questioning yourself, is it worth it? But trust me, it's really worth it. You have to put education first. After, after you put God first, second comes education and focus in that space. When I was, when I was uh, growing up, 13 years, 14 years, 15 years, 16 years, much younger than you, my children, I left home. I left home into boarding school. And I was in the care of boarding school system. Lucky it was a church school system, and so we had a regimented lifestyle. Get up on time, wash on time, go to church on time, uh, eat on time, work on time, study on time, sleep on time, get up again on time. Uh, you will not have that regimented lifestyle. You'll be out there in a land that has many opportunities, make the most of that opportunity. But remain true to yourself, discipline yourself. And if I could ask you, you, you big boys and girls now, and I don't need to advise you in everything you need to do. Abstain from alcohol, abstain from cigarettes, abstain from boys and girls. Focus on education, put God first. And you will come back or you will live your life being men and women you're born to be. You're born to be someone special. You're already special enough. God has created you in the first place. And your country is giving you this opportunity. You're the pace setters. Behind you, more generation of young Papua New Guineans will walk and follow this path going forward to be sponsored by government to go and study the world and work or come back and work here. You pace setters, this 43, you are starting a generation of Papua New Guineans who want to sponsor abroad, study work or come back and work here. So make the most of it, learn from Daniel, he put God first and he rose up to the highest in a foreign land. Nothing is impossible, you can do it too. It is not the measure of your outlook that is important, it is really measure of your inward character and your inner faculty in your mind that is important. And so get the, make the most of it, your government, your country, your parents, your education department stands ready to support you all the way through. God bless each and every